Hi there, I'm Nutrix, and today we're looking at the Gaia 2, but in a different way. What I mean by that is that this is not a tutorial, this is not a review, this is a course or a synthesis course or a sound design course on the Gaia 2. This can be used for any other synth in a way because a lot of the concepts you'll see with me in these videos are about the Gaia 2, but the Gaia 2 has a, I would say, universal way of working that this can be translated to a lot of other synthesizers. So what you'll learn with me on this synthesizer can be translated to a lot of others. Just remember that I did over the years videos on my YouTube channel about Synth 101. So basic stuff about what is a synthesizer? How does it work? What type of components does it use to make sound? What is an oscillator? What are differences between the different oscillators? What are filters? Digital, analog, low pass, high pass, and all that stuff. I did also videos about the LFOs. What are these? How do they work? And videos about the envelopes. How do they work? What are they used for? How do you use them creatively? I did videos about FM. So all of these, I'll put the link below. There's a playlist with a list of all these videos. If you're new to synthesis, you should start with these first and then come back to this video. I'm still gonna use a lot of concepts I show in the other videos, but I go deeper into these concepts in the other videos where I have a very wide view of how, let's say a filter works. And there's just like, not just one version, but there's many different versions. And I'll make you listen to different companies and brand and models and make and all that stuff. In the case of today's video, we'll look into the sources. So the oscillators in the case of the Gaia 2. The next one's gonna be on filter an envelope. The next one after that will be on LFOs. And after that, we'll talk about all the other types of controllers you have, like the step sequencer, the keyboard, the, cause it, I mean, it, it sounds stupid to people sometimes, but the keyboard is a controller, of course, to play the note, but there's other ways that synthesis can answer and respond to the way you play. So velocity, note on, note off, there's uh there's the key that you're playing. So we'll look into these. Sometimes people forget about those and they're really useful for giving life to the sound. And then we'll jump into labs or practice. So I'll give you exercises to create stuff. I'll ask you, try to do this, try to do that. And I'll give answers. I'll show you what, how I would do them. So that's gonna be the next step. The last step is gonna be practicing, basically. The goal is to have you knowledgeable enough to make a sound from what you think in your head into you know, making it on a synthesizer or listening to a sound and go, this is cool, but it's not exactly what I want. And then knowing where to go change the knob that you need to get the sound you want from that already cool sound to tweak it into your own. So that's the goal over these videos. So I think I'm gonna make probably uh, six videos about it or seven, depending on, on how many videos I do about sounds right away if you like this video of course thumb up and share it but write down in the comments what type of sound you would like me to describe and make even put a link to or tell me about you know the sound used in that song and all that stuff because when i get into the labs of course we have like generic sound we all need to be able to do but after that i can do very specific sound to make it so that you know how to make the sound you want to do. That's it. So let's start with the oscillators. So in the synthesis of the Gaia, we have three different oscillators here. This section here is the whole section of the oscillators. So we've got oscillator one, two, and three. The two and three are virtual analog oscillators. So they're really made to recreate the sound of a real analog synth. There's different ways and controls about it. Under it, you have a section of how you want these to combine each other. Like cross modulation is to modulate. It's a little bit like FM is they multiply each other and they create complex waveform, sync and ring. Ring, you have to press shift at the same time. You have to press shift and ring. And then you, ha you have the ring activated or press once and you've got the sync activated. To see if it's ring or sync, if you see it flashing, ring is activated. If you don't see it flashing, if it's just, you know, on all the time, it's a solid blue light, then it's sync. So difference. First thing first, to be able to really hear what's happening, we're going to initialize the sound. Very easy to do. 
there's in it here on the panel. You press once on it, and then it says, "You do you want to? You know, are you sure? Yeah, okay. Now it's initialized. So on screen right away, you can see that here you have the frequencies. You've got the root key, and you get all the harmonics. As you go up, you see the differences. It's even more obvious between the frequencies. Okay, and you see the frequencies here also. So the the root key and the first harmonic, second harmonic. Actually, it's not the first one, but it's the first in the content of this one. So you see how it's made. And you see the oscilloscope, the graphic of it. So that's how we're going to look at the information as we go along. Let's just simply listen. So I'm going to bring down the volume of the mixer and bring up just oscillator 2 so we hear. So this one is the sine wave here. Sine wave, only one frequency, the root one. And as you go up, you change to. So all of the oscillators, they have control over the pitch. So 64 is very low. I don't want to hear the my speakers. Just a little bit. 32, 16. So you're just changing the pitch of it. Then the next one is detuning so this one is to tune it but this is in cent so you can go up to well 1200 cent so you're at an octave higher when you're at 1200 you're at an octave higher so you all these different options in between so this is useful when you have two oscillators playing at the same time and you want to create that big sound we'll look at it very soon shape you can change the shape of the sine wave and the shape is possible to be sh changed for all of the waveform which is not normal in most analog synthesizers because usually this is only for the square wave where you get a square and as you do this your square become what is it as you do this your square become something else you're changing to a pulse. So the pulse width modulation, that would be this. But in today technology, you can do the same thing with every, every shape that you have. So you can bring, so you see the shape changes from a triangular waveform. And if you go very far, it becomes a sawtooth. So you see all the other frequencies coming in, all of them, odd and harmonics. So the richest, oscillator you can have and then you go you have a sawtooth and as you play this you have like a double sawtooth it's cool is when you move this slowly you get that kind of you know phasey sound coming in so you create movement instead of This is kind of stale compared to this movement, which is pretty cool. And to the end, it becomes comes back to being a sawtooth, but the other way around. Actually, you know, just lower in pitch. Okay, we just did the square wave. Next one is a super saw. Super saw is something that Roland invented in the JP8000 to recreate what we could do in analog polysynth. In the polysynth, what you could do would, would to have, let's say, a sawtooth or two sawtooth and then put it into unison mode and then detune it. So you would have like five notes playing each two voices all stacked together and a little bit detune. It would just create that massive sound. And this is what you have, you know? You get that big sound. But then when you turn it, you're detuning them. It becomes chaotic. So, well, a cool super saw. Get the noise. When you play with the shape, there's really not. Oh, whoops, sorry. Right you're going. You're basically filtering out the top end. 
So this, this is basically just one. So if you want to create these analog sounding sound, it's easy to just take two of them and then play with the pitch. that very raw in your face type of sound again this is just the two oscillators analog one that's it now if you bring in cross modulation let's say we can get it down here cross modulation to here as the cleanest is to get with a sine, a sine wave That's why I'm saying it sounds a lot like FM in a way. So this could be really interesting if you want to use to have that, you know, complex sound. Now you've got envelope depth. A and D, attack and DK. And if you play with this, If we activate sync, and when we turn off the first one, let's say we just listen to the second sound. Then we have this one, okay? If we don't have sync, and you turn this, you're just changing the pitch, okay? But if you add sync, This is the sync sound. So it basically, it forces the, the synced oscillator, in this case, number three, to re-trigger his uh, cyclic repetition or his period of playback or a uh, cycle of playback of one oscilla oscillation when the other, the main, the synced master, let's say two in this case, So if I change this one, I was gonna change the pitch. It's sync to two. This is pretty cool. It's always a really nice sound. You see here, when you go deeper for each of these, you get the range, which you see here, you get the pitch. So it's this value here that changes actually. Or oscillator one exit. I'm gonna go in third one. This one. Okay. It's a sawtooth down. It's uh these the type of shape that you decide on. Okay, let's see. I'm gonna take uh pulse width. I got the shape, I got the click type. Now listen to this one. So this is the main sound. Let's have this. And then I add the second one. The second one is in sync with some envelope depth to modify this one. And the DK you can say. And how much you want to go high.
pretty cool. So again, we're just using traditional analog waveform and way of combination. Again, if we change this, go shift sync, instead of go ring. Let's turn it off for now. If we listen to the ring. You see now the ring does not affect the third one where the sync was doing that. But you, when you bring up the second one, so when you're in ring mode, it's also the two that is affected. And if I bring back the pitch envelope, go here, if you listen to the third one. Now the envelope affects two. So it's it's really logical. This is what you would like to do. Instead of you guessing that the envelope depth is actually useful when you do sync, but on the third one, and when you do ring on the second one, it's hardwired for you. So as you change this, the assignment of the envelope depth seems to change. So this is really cool. Now, let's go back here and just look at the screen here, just to understand how everything com combines together before we go further. We have these three oscillators here. And yes, you can use the pad as a trackpad, basically. So one, two, and three, they're combined into the mix here. And then they go into the filter and then go into the amplifier. And for each of them, we got a filter envelope, amplitude envelope, then it goes into the effects here the MFX, which is the multi effect, then the chorus and the reverb. And you can actually change this if you want and switch the order into something else. You see reverb or chorus, MFX and reverb. And then, so it's your personal choice as you want to change this. LFO2, LFO1 and mod and oscillator envelope. Now, what's really different from the rest of most virtual analog or hybrid synth is that in this case, we have this line here. Oscillator one is a wavetable oscillator. Now, before people ask, can I put my own wavetable? No, I don't know if it's gonna be one day, but no. And it's pretty logical why it's there like that, is that wavetable gives you other ways of creating sounds and source to play with, but because this is a synthesizer and you can create a lot of sounds and it's really powerful, then the notion of the wavetable is they have to be curated well. They have to be picked and so they're musically useful. Of course, maybe one day Roland will give an option. I don't know, but it has to be curated well so they're musically useful and functional. And this is what this is. It's actually pretty, pretty cool. So what we'll do, okay? We have the same logic. When you press here, we bring the volume up. Why well, don't I have any? volume it's too low here that's it. it was too low in pitch so what i'll do i have this volume here now if you listen to this it sounds oh it's very sine wavy it's look you know look at this it, it, it's a sine wave and you have here so if i bring it up again okay very sine wavy but what we do if we change the position different shape that we have. Again, I'm verifying I'm in the first one. I'm not. So in the first one, this is very, it's a little bit like a sine wave. And as you go up, kind of a feedback type of sound, like FM feedback a little bit. So what you have here is basically each position when you move this, you have another index of the wavetable. So wavetable is you have, let's say many, many snapshot, digital snapshot of a sound, and you put them all in a list with index. And basically when you play with the position, you're moving between the index. 
So you're moving between a snapshots of a single cycle of that sound. What's interesting is you can create these evolution of sounds are less obvious to create with an oscillator, a classic analog oscillator. And you can also create a banks of very complex sound or very acoustic sound. So it all depends on what you want to do. In this case, this one sounds more like an FM feedback. You have the feedback coming in here. So the recorded states and the evolution of the feedback. Second one. So this is this is a cool thing because the virtual analog does not permit you to have a oscillator that change shape. Certain synthesizer do that. When you move the knob, you go from sine wave to sawtooth to square and all the shape in between. Now with the position here, you're going between recordings, snapshots, and then you see, you're gradually changing to a triangular, and then you're going to a sawtooth, and then you go into a square wave. So this is pretty cool. This is again, something that you wouldn't do normally with the VA here. It just doesn't exist in this set. Oh, they are just like slightly. So you can imagine this for an icy type of cold pad with evolution of the timber. Wavetable could be used without the filter because in the way they build it anyway, in the early stage, in the first index, you're always or almost always, almost with a sine wave. You're always with the root key and as you go up, you open up the frequencies or the different uh, different options. You see, that is FM. That is an FM sending gradually FM to us. So again, this is not a synthesizer that does FM but the recorded evolution of FM modulation. So if you want to do FM, you can, in this case. That's FM. Look at these harmonics and harmonics coming in. Again, very logical in the fact that they recorded other ways of synthesizers to create modulation and sounds that wouldn't be possible with this one, so they recorded it. And again, this is just one oscillator, but it sounds like two or three combined making these different complex waveforms. That again sounds like FM. What I love to do when you have an oscillator like that is to actually send an LFO to it. So if you just go into the LFO, I'm gonna assign, and I'm gonna go to the second one, actually second, second one and press on it and move the position. And then as we play it, Thank you. 
cool. So really, right off the bat with just these three oscillators, which is a lot right away, you've got ways to combine them with the cross modulation with the sync and the ring. And then you've got the powerful sound of the oscillator of the one, the first one, the wave table. And then when you combine them, you can create a lot of different sound and complex. You can imagine like this is gonna be the top end and this will be the bottom. And this could be a sub. That's it for the oscillators. Next video, the filter, and then the rest of the Gaia tune. That's it for today. Stay safe, make more music, and see you soon. Cheers.